We had a question today on the forums by a user on how to create a wraparound ECG chart. Um, so what this guy wants to do is he's attempting to replace an existing chart by Infragistics and uh, he needs something with a bit less CPU hungry as the existing solution is a bit too slow. And what he wants to do is have four waveforms, each displaying eight seconds, wrap around on itself and moving with a gap like an ECG machine in a hospital. Now this gets asked a lot um, and uh, if you look at our search engine and you type in uh, wrap around ECG, you'll find all sorts of questions which are similar um, to this kind of thing. So it gets asked a lot. How do we do this? Well, I had a go at it today. I must stress this is not something that SciChart supports out of the box, but I believe it can be done with a little bit of work. So I created a uh, an example called Sweeping ECG. And here I have created a SciChart surface with two renderable series. I'm going to call them Trace A and Trace B. I'm using the DirectX render surface because it provides high quality um, traces and it's also quite fast. And I'm adding an x-axis and a y-axis. The y-axis visible range has been chosen um, to fit my data and I have a x-axis vis visible range of 0 to 10. Now in code behind what I've done is I basically create two data series A and B and there's a FIFO capacity of 3800. Now this number is deliberate, it's slightly smaller than the value um, that our user has requested. He requested 4,000 samples. So I've gone for 3,800 and you'll see why in a moment. The FIFO series works like a circular buffer. If you append data to it, eventually when it reaches this capacity, it will start discarding old data points and getting rid of them. Now we're loading some data from a from a, a file. This file is actually located in the um, it's, it's located in the WPF examples. So you need to have a reference to the WPF examples here, or you can provide your own data. So for for purposes of this demo, just ignore this part of the code. We're we're literally just loading some waveform data, and we're going to cycle through it to display. And we start the timer with an interval and have an elapsed. And we're assigning our A and B series to the renderable series. Now, in the timer elapsed, this is where the magic happens. So every time the timer ticks, we're going to append 10 points. This is simply because the timer can't tick any quicker than 20 milliseconds, and we just want it to update a little bit faster. So this is where the meat of the work happens. This is the bit that we want to look at. So this is our data source and our data source for the waveform.txt um, actually looks like this it's just a bunch of Y values uh, and this is an ECG trace that we've um, basically simulated and, um, and put in our examples so we're computing a time we need a time now your data is going to have time and it's going to have Y value so you don't need to worry about this now the clever part is here is that we toggle which trace gets the time and the voltage value and which trace gets not a number and we're also toggling which trace has opacity 1 and which trace has opacity 0 0.5 and we're computing that toggle based on the f on when we hit 4000 as an index we toggle from A to B so let's see how this, this works in practice so this is our example that we've got running here and you'll see that when the trace hits the right hand side so this is trace A over here which is basically running out because uh, we're, we're filling it with double not a number now over here on the left so when trace B hits the right hand side this one is going to start to run out and trace A takes over so this is trace A now so we've in effect created a wraparound ECG chart with two traces using FIFO which is our circular buffer implementation so that the old data points get discarded and we're toggling which trace we're filling with data so that it becomes more prominent. Now something else I also had the idea of was that if we were to use palette provider we could basically dim this trace the older it gets that would be a really really cool extension in fact let me let me pause the video and I'm going to try and implement that There we go. So how have we implemented this? Well, the first part of the video described actually how it works. And what we did was uh, we had two renderable series. So let's have a quick look here. Trace A and B. And we had 
uh, two data series, data series A and B, and in the append loop which occurred on the uh, time elapsed, what we did was we determined which trace was it by using a modulus function and then appending time and voltage or time and not a number to alternate traces. So since then the changes that I've made are as follows. Number one, I'm now using an XYZ data series. Um, by storing the time as a modulus in the first value, the X value, this is how we achieve our wraparound. By storing the real time in the Z value, this is how we compute what the opacity should be. So I've commented out this code here for the uh, opacity. This was simple toggling on and off of the opacity of the, of the traces as they went into the past or not, um, because we're now handling the opacity in a palette provider. And I've created this uh, dim trace palette provider. So the palette provider feature basically allows you to choose the color of a line segment depending on the X and Y value. Um, and what we've done here is we, this is called for every point drawn in the series and we say look if it's a not a number or there's no data series or there's no FIFO capacity just return the default color. Otherwise find the index of the current value that we are coloring right now, get the XYZ data series, get the actual time which we're storing in the Z values and get the latest time. This is the, the most recent time. So for example this latest time could be 57 seconds and the actual time could be 50 seconds. Then we determine how old is the sample in a range from 0 to 1, where, where basically 0, that's not correct, it should be 0, 0.0, 0 is on the far left of the screen and 1 is on the far right. So as the trace wraps around, this sample age is going 0 to 1, 0 to 1. Then we simply do some rounding and some clamping to make sure that we've got our sample age. We're actually clamping it between 0 0.3 and 1.0, so it's never fully transparent. It's always a little bit um, visible. And we're doing it in 10 steps, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, up to 1.0. Now, why are we doing this in 10 steps? If we create a new pen, if, if this color changes all the time, you know, by one, number one, you're not going to see it. And number two, the renderer has to stop and restart the line segment each time, which is quite an expensive operation. It's better to have fewer color changes rather than a continuous sort of a graduation between one color and another. What we've done is we're, we're choosing 10 opacity steps. So the result of this dim trace palette provider, and it's attached here, palette provider equals, um, and declared as a static resource, is that when the trace is on the left, um, as it advances in time, it's going to stay white until it gets to the right edge, and then over here we're going to be looking dimmer. But when it wraps around, that basically the latest value is going to be the most bright, and older values are going to be dim. Now, something else we did um, in order to just put a bit of icing on the cake was I added a custom annotation with an ellipse and a blur, and the custom annotation is centered on X and Y point. These two are just set for the designer so we can have a look at it here. And in code behind, in the append method, we are updating the annotations uh, time and voltage equal to the latest point. So the net result of this is that we've got our sweeping traces going from left to right, dimming out, and the dot shows the latest value. So I hope you um, got something out of this. I hope it was uh, enlightening to you guys. And um, we're aware that it, it's, it would be nice if this was supported natively. So we're going to have to think about how to do that because it really does get asked all the time. Um, but I hope that this helps you in the meantime.